Let's get real, real quick. If you're new to investing, there can be a lot of information to get your head around. It's completely normal to want to just stuff your money in a mattress until retirement. However, the sooner you start investing, the closer you'll be to your financial goals, which is why we're here, and it's why you're here. We want you to reach those goals, and we can help you get there. Now, before we get going, I'm not a tax professional, and advice for your unique financial situation should be reviewed by an advisor for your personal circumstances. I just want you to be aware of the key considerations to think about while exploring this topic and the help that's out there as you start your own research. Because your real life questions need real answers. So first, we're going to talk about how to start investing toward your goals. Once we're comfortable there, we'll look at strategies to support long-term investing. Then. We'll have an overview of savings plans and investment tools. And finally, we'll look at the value of continued investing in fluctuating markets. Lesson one, how to start investing toward your goals. There is no one size fits all approach to investing. Everyone is unique and has a vision for their future that's specific to them, which is why a good starting point is to think about the type of lifestyle you want your future self to have. Is your financial goal to own a home? If so, a house or a condo, kids or no kids, city or suburb, nobody knows you better than you do. So how do you see yourself living your best life? These goals are very real needs that we all have for comfort, security, and freedom. And once you have a sense of the details of your goals, they can be taken to an advisor who will help you reach them. The Canadian economy has safeties in place that protect our banks and markets from the extremes we've witnessed in foreign markets. For example, did you know that in Canada, deposit insurance protects your savings if your financial institution fails? You don't have to apply or pay for deposit insurance. The Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation, CDIC, automatically insures your eligible deposits at any CDIC member institution in Canada, up to $100,000 per deposit category. You can dream about the future knowing that your savings will be safe. Because let's face it, inflation is an unavoidable reality. So keeping your money in your mattress is akin to it being eaten by bedbugs. Setting your goals and starting sooner than later allows you to take advantage of compounding returns. Having your returns compound, which means earning interest on interest, works for you when you're investing. Let's look at some real numbers. Say you have $30,000 in a five-year investment with a 4% annual interest rate. The first time your interest is calculated, it earns $1,200, growing your balance to $31,200. The next year, the interest is calculated on the $31,200 and comes to $1,248, which brings your balance up to $32,448, and so on until after five years, your initial $30,000 is now $36,449. Feeling ready to take that first step? Whether you have $50 or $50,000 to start with, then the answer is yes. It's as simple as making an appointment with an advisor. You should expect to have an open conversation about what your goals are, how comfortable you are with risk, and what resources you have to put towards investing. All licensed mutual fund advisors have passed the Investment Funds of Canada exam and devote their professional lives to understanding the market. It's their job to thoroughly inform you. There are no dumb questions. They succeed when they have co-created an investment portfolio that you're comfortable with. So find an advisor you click with and get to growing your savings. Lesson two, strategies to support long-term investing. So let's say you don't have savings, let alone an emergency fund. Does that mean you can't invest? Absolutely not. In fact, you can utilize investing to establish an emergency fund. Emergency funds are like a layer of protection for your savings. A savings account with immediate access containing four to six months worth of salary can carry you through a challenging financial time. The more employment or income risk you face, the more you'll want in your emergency fund. And you can use pre-authorized contributions to make it a healthy financial habit. Using pre-authorized contributions to put a percentage of income away every month works whether you're a full-time employee or a freelancer. It's basically treating your investments like a bill, something you don't have to think about, you just do. 
you can set up a monthly auto contribution to go directly into an account that you've named emergency fund. Once that account balance reaches your goal, the auto contribution can be redirected to a different investment that expands your portfolio. As for how much to contribute, that's based on your monthly budget. There are a variety of guidelines out there. You may have heard of the 10% rule or the 80-10-10 rule. These guidelines boil down to figuring out what percentage of your income can go towards your savings. Things to consider when setting up a savings plan. Your monthly cost of living, personal debt, and how long you have until you expect to reach your savings milestone. Our budgeting calculator can help you get a sense of what those numbers look like. And of course, an advisor can also help you determine what percentage is best for you. Investing from a place of personal security and comfort is an important first step towards reaching your financial goals. Lesson three, savings plans and investment tools. An advisor can give far greater detail, but in order for you to have a head start in your understanding, I'll walk you through an overview of two very important financial supports, savings plans and investment tools. When it comes to investing towards goals, there are a variety of accounts with government incentives designed to help you reach them. They are Registered Retirement Savings Plans, RSPs, Registered Education Savings Plans, RESPs, Registered Disability Savings Plans, RDSPs, and Tax-Free Savings Accounts, TFSAs. When you make a Registered Retirement Savings Plan contribution, you lower your overall taxable income. When it comes time to withdraw those funds, it becomes taxable income. Just for example, say you're 35, you earn $50,000 a year, and you make a $5,000 contribution to your RRSP. That year, your taxable income is reduced to $45,000. Now let's say you're 70, and you withdraw that $5,000 from your RRSP. That $5,000 will now be considered taxable income. Registered Education Savings Plan contributions are not tax deductible. They can, however, earn you tax-free interest in a variety of investments within the RESP. And because the money paid out of an RESP is taxed in the hand of the student, they will pay considerably less tax. Additionally, RESP contributions can be matched by the federal government through the Canada Education Savings Grant, or CESG. This grant matches 20% of your contributions up to $2,500 annually, with a lifetime limit of $50,000 per beneficiary. Tax-free savings accounts, on the other hand, are not tax deductible. And because of that, they are not taxed as income when withdrawn, nor will you be taxed on the interest earned from your TFSA investments. The contributions to a registered disability savings plan are not tax deductible. However, the interest earned on the investment, including government grants and bonds, are all taxable upon withdrawal. RDSPs are only available to Canadians with a disability tax credit number. Similar to RESPs, RDSPs can benefit from additional grants and bonds. The Canada Disability Savings Grant will match contributions depending on the beneficiary's net family income. So think of each of these savings plans as a type of container that holds the money rather than grows it. To grow your money, now this is where investment tools come in. Investment tools each have their own set of risks and benefits, but in general, there are guaranteed investment certificates, GICs, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, life insurance, and finally exchange traded funds, ETFs. Every tool has several factors that an advisor can guide you through, but in general, they are designed to support you in outpacing inflation. The difference with your savings account is that even though the money held there may not earn enough to be taxed, the balance stays the same. Meanwhile, inflation is causing the cost of living to rise each year, and some years more than others. For example, if you were to look at a household that spent $5,000 in 1980, with inflation, that would cost $16,967 today. Lesson four, the value of continued investing in fluctuating markets. So, you've done your research into what accounts and tools are right for you. You've set up an emergency fund and have a savings mindset. It's time to grow your money. Despite the image we are shown in movies of stockbrokers screaming buy, sell, investing is all about the long game. 
Think of your net worth as an actual net, with your investments covering a broad spectrum of wisely chosen funds. Which brings us to the role that risk plays in investment outcomes. A general rule of thumb is that the higher the risk of an investment, the higher the return, and therefore the more investment stands to earn. That is unless risk factors or volatility cause an investment to lose value. So depending on your personal level of comfort with risk, this will determine what kinds of investments you make over time. Lower risk options tend to be GICs, bonds, and low risk mutual funds and ETFs. While higher risk options tend to be stocks and high risk mutual funds and ETFs. This is a very simplified overview and speaking to an advisor or certified financial planner will give you a much clearer sense of why certain tools carry more or less risk than others. Think of your investments in units. Let's say you have a mutual fund with a value of $10 a unit. The market goes down and that mutual fund is now worth $9, a drop of 10%. If you make the emotionally reactive choice to cash out at $9 a unit, you miss the earning opportunity that comes as the value begins to recover. The emotional reaction to sell when markets are down can hurt you as you'll miss out on any potential market recovery. History shows us that if given enough time, the market will return to and even exceed its previous value before it fell. Remember, it's a long game. If you can leave a traditional balanced fund alone for at least three years, it's estimated to have a 70% chance of a positive return. Five years bumps that likelihood to 80%, and in 10 years, it's closer to 100%. So we've gone over how to start investing toward your goals, strategies to support long-term investing, savings plans and investment tools, and the value of continued investing in fluctuating markets. I'm sure you've noticed the theme that the earlier you begin, the better off you'll be. As they say, the best day to start investing is today, and the second best day is as soon as you can. So start where you're comfortable, learn, and grow as you go. And don't be afraid to ask questions. We're here to help because your real life questions need real answers.